I have a pair of my glasses that I got at uh, Oliver Peoples, and I basically buy like two or three of them. So I had these black ones. You know, I went to go see him at the Greek years ago, and uh, the kind of are, Caesar words. The kind of Caesar words. So I go, hey Caesar. I try these on. He goes, oh, these are nice. And I said, those are the ones that Jay-Z wears. So Jay-Z wears oh, these yeah. big daddy bees, uh, Oliver Peoples. <laughs> and, I, and he goes, oh, these are nice. I go, you can have them. He goes, what? For reals? Because, you know, then he goes, I go, yeah. I mean, they just look perfect on him. And then he goes, Mija, these are the ones JC wears. Fucking <laughs> 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 Z, motherfucker, <laughs> JC. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios, Hola. With me, George Lopez, porque sabes que, let's do the show, porque I got a lot of things to do, thing I gotta go to that dry cleaner here, my kid fell, se pegó la cabeza, I gotta go get some Neo Spore, Spore and Paul. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh my God. OMG. OMG, bye. Oh my God, hi. About five o'clock, they came and told me, they said, hey, you know, we've had two emergencies. Yours is not scheduled till at least 8.50, and we're not even sure if it's going to go then. What the fuck? Is there only one fucking doctor working this, now? This was the valve specialist, the heart guy. They called in another surgeon even to help him out. The procedure took so long. They brought him in. They saved his life, at least for the night. So my procedure was just going to be pushed back a little bit. I mean, they wanted to. What if to, they said, what if that nurse came out and they said, hey, uh, listen. A couple of emergencies came in. One guy severe. I mean, we we, we we had to stop his heart, restart it. That's what they had to do with this guy. And, uh, okay, well, then I'm on the right path. Yeah. And then <laughs> we were in there, and we found that they had a little baby heart attached to the regular heart. We took that one out. It's right now, it's, it's in a fucking hamster in Lancaster. The hamster's still alive. We're going to bring it back Friday from 3 to 5. Put it in a person, Lo Chinito, probably. That person's going to live. So we have to put you on the back burner, okay? Then you open the door to the doctor's office. They're both in there like that. (laughs) 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 Did did, did you fucking believe it or not? (laughs) (laughs) My hands are shaking. I'm not going to touch anybody right now. (laughs) They could tell you anything and we believe it. Well, they could. What are the people that say... uh, Remember that guy that, did you watch that thing on Netflix? Uh, uh, he's like a uh, curandero from like from Brazil. No, no. I don't think so. No. You wake up with his fucking dick on your arm, man. You're like, what the fuck? He puts you to sleep and then you wake up and you're like, ah! You know, you know, I, I watched that other one you told me like about. Crema all over you. like, what the fuck kind of church is this? I watched that, you're speaking of that, I watched that other one you told me Which about, one? about the octopus. Oh, oh yeah. What do you think? What the hell is that? Uh, what do you shit. think of that? Is it the most amazing thing? That that that's fascinating stuff. I, I once I started watching, I said, I'm sitting there saying, "Oh, this is fucked up. Oh, I'm not gonna watch this." And then it just kind of sucks you in. You keep watching and watching, and watching it, and it was almost sad when they had to leave. You know, he didn't even leave a phone number or nothing. Mm-hmm. It was, they, they, I don't know if they made love. But they were holding hands yeah. in the water <laughs> at high tide. Crazy. You see it? You saw it? I know. I, it's I, the I, wildest I, I thing. Yeah. Yeah. That an octopus, that, I guess that guy, did he lose his son or something? Somebody died that, and he, he was kind of lost, and he always had yeah. been into like diving and stuff, so he started to yeah. dive, and then he saw this octopus, and they started fucking dating. I don't know. <laughs> How so? As someone who hasn't seen it, how did they actually? And then like, octopus meet? have like a thousand little octopus babies, and then they put one under the microscope and have exactly the same eyes as that dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one. Check the DNA. <laughs> There's some cows out there that remember we talked about that are born with people's heads. There's some shit going on, man. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to Oscar other than, you know. Seeing him here and seeing him look good, sweating. Yeah, you know, he was drinking just coffee. Yeah, and then uh, what was it? Wednesday, maybe that he had it. And I, I looked on Instagram, and he I was think in the Friday, hospital. Friday is when I Friday, found out. Friday I don't know when, when it like found broke. Out. He was but. in the hospital, which already tells you that it's that it's severe. Like yeah, he looked and he looked bad. So um, he was unshaven, mm-hmm. laying down. Yeah. yeah, the lighting was poor. But what's what's going on, man? We're like, what's happening with all that? And he was vaccinated too, right? He was vaccinated. Yeah. So he, it was a breakthrough sort of case. Let me see if I can get a hold of him. I've been hearing that after it's like, maybe as far as like the boosters go, it seems like after five five months seems to be something of like a cutoff point where they're starting to see more people get breakthrough cases. 
Okay, so um, as uh, as people of you know wherever they podcast is, of 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 the world, you're gonna stick. You see people, yeah, right, that one right there. You see people wearing uh, masks going into a store, and uh, they're all touching the doorknob without gloves. I mean, isn't that putting that risk? If you go to, they're all touching money and change and. I think it's it's mostly, and I haven't been as on top of this. I should have been, but I think it's mostly because it's like it's aerosolized or it's it's like particles in the air, basically. Like I remember early on in the pandemic, it was like, oh, um, you know, be you careful sneeze. with the food, wipe down everything you touch, et cetera. And still, you know, always good to like wash your hands and that thing. But I think as far like the mask, the, the hand stuff is going to be way less effective than the mask stuff. Ultimately. The old uh, homicide cop that I am, it says, when it's your time, it's your time. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Is what that what you, you guys do. believe? Yeah, I, I I believe that. You know, you when it's your time, they just somebody up up there just says, "Okay, three fifty two today. It's his time." You. My grandma used to say, "If it's your time, it's your time." Um, genetics. People get sick as a kid. You know, as a, you know, I've seen a lot of people that have been sick. Um, because of my own kidney thing, you know, but like, you know, of kids that are sick and then them saying, hey, can you go to the hospital and talk to this kid, you know, or go see this kid. Uh, you know, kid, kids were born with like leukemia and, and stuff like that, that don't even live a year. I mean, yeah. it's tough. It's, it's tough. Isn't it? It's tough. Uh, that, those, are, those are tough. I hated kid cases. I, kids are, are terrible. When it's your time, I remember I bought a motorcycle. Oh, I, had a, I had a Harley. <sighs> And my mom is saying, Por que, mijo? You know, you're going to fall down. And I said, Mom, when it's your time, it's your time. Look, at, I was just a couple of weeks ago at Cerritos Air Crash disaster. Mm -hmm. I said, people having a barbecue in their backyard, they had no idea a plane was going to land and wipe right. out the whole family in the house. It was their time. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, they were doing nothing wrong. I asked my partner, Ray Verdugo, I said, how much time do you think? You know, we're out there looking at this disaster. I said, how much time do you think the passenger had? on that Idaho Mexico from the time they impacted to the time they landed. How long they must have been. He looked up and he looked down, he looked at me and he says, Ah, oh, about enough time for three IIIs and two ideos meals. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. I mean we're coming on the twenty years of uh, 9 nine eleven. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of documentaries out there. There's yeah. one on uh National Geographic or History Channel. Yeah. There's like like six of them, six yeah. different episodes mm -hmm. and uh I was asked to be a guest speaker uh, for 9-11, Saturday, for the VFW. and uh, It's coincidence, because I, I was asked to speak at Mohamed Atta's uh, daughter's uh, quinceanera. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> I, I can't be there. How come? He'll be at the I'm, quinceanera. I'm going to be uh, <laughs> flying back from Dallas. I leave for Dallas tomorrow. Wait a minute. Where are you going to be in Dallas? I'm going over there to be a speaker. At a Dallas conference for on Saturday? Uh, no, I'm leaving tomorrow. I speak on Thursday or Friday, but I don't come. My flight doesn't come back till Saturday, and it doesn't it doesn't uh, land until 11:30, and that'll be done with over there at the BFW. It's a morning thing. Did they move it for you? Pardon me? No, they move it? no. They they had already set out the schedule. They sent out flyers. They did, they did everything, and they just wanted me to address because. It's a veteran, but it's really, I think, for 9-11 to remember them. Mm -hmm. And so since I've had both sides of the fence, they wanted me uh, to be there for them. But I could well, do You're going to be speaking tomorrow, though, I, I heard on the news. Big Boys. Big Boys, uh, yeah, oh, oh, Hollywood yeah. Star. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. You know, the uh, there's testing there, too. You have to make sure that, you know, you're tested uh, and good for it, but also won't let you in. Inside, sure. In the vicinity of that, yeah, of that thing. absolutely. Yeah, I have no problem with with testing. I have no problem with any of it. I don't panic over any of it. I don't get scared. You know, I don't get touch, touch that, touch this shit. If I touch myself, yeah. I'll touch anything. There we go. You know, we're, we're all negative too, right? Just yeah, so everyone knows, negative. everyone Everybody, tested negative. Yeah. We're all good. Yeah, even though Oscar was here. Spraying his fucking germs everywhere through his coffee. <laughs> it was weird when he just started <laughs> spitting everywhere. That was. You know, <laughs> it's a good thing. No calzones were flying. They would have spread those germs all over the place. Just the idea that calzones probably, oh, I, probably put them in the air. I, hey, do you know? Do you know what these are for? Do you know what this is? Well, Somebody told is? me this. You know what this is? It's a frisbee. 
if you are not, if you haven't finished drinking the beer, you put it on, you put it in your refrigerator, and it doesn't go flat. Why what? Not? Huh? Oh, that's genius. Where, where's that? Huh? Coors Light. Well, fuck that mama. Hey, so I said, the guy says, I put that thing on, and it, it, it doesn't let the beer go flat. I said, what thing? The, wow. the, the holder. Yeah. You mean those black little plastic circles? Stupid ass. Put it on like that. Yeah, those things are... I've, I've like, discovered so many things Good. about those. They've got the handle built in in the middle, which took me a while to find. They've got you, resealable, like you're doing. You can take it off, put it back on. It's uh, That's some high technology you got. I like to take credit for Ma, it. Ma's chingon. <laughs> stupid, like, I don't know what it is, but I'm the one. No. But we used to put, just put a, a, a napkin in yeah. Yeah, the, right? the hole with yeah. the kids. And they go, hey... Even if that soda was in there for seven years, you couldn't have another soda till you finished drinking that one, and then it would go flat. So oh, you were yeah. essentially drinking fucking black olive juice Aye. because they wouldn't yeah. let you get another flat soda. Flat soda. You it's know. So what of, else is going on? Speaking about, I want to one more thing about Oscar. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I watch. I don't watch all the shows. You know, we, we do them. You know, they're here. Uh, what show did you watch? Oscars. This show. This show. George oh, Lopez only oh. got high. Oh, yeah. And I watched the show. That it's different did. when you watch it than if you're, than you're yes. there, right? Yeah. But I laughed just as hard watching the show than no, I did when good. I was here. God. So it's, it's legit. You it's, were it's inside good. a long time. Ago. And I could see my I could see my face when you said, "Okay, watch that." He's gonna cry right now when I start talking about <laughs> that. I could see the look on my face, Hardy going, "Oh, <laughs> you know? yeah." It was a um, good show. Oscar, yeah, thank you, yeah, Jeff, well, thank you. Um, you know, it's fascinating, man, because. It's never as simple as just somebody just having to do their job. Like Oscar didn't want to fight. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know that. Then he said he was sexually abused, which I didn't want to get into here because it's so close to the fight, you know. Yeah, sure. I, I you don't want to I didn't bring him here to question him about being sexually sure. abused, but you know, um But I didn't know that either myself, so that was But then his father being tough and his mother passing away. And his mother was I, hard on him too. I remember the interview. I remember Fred Rogan. I remember the uh, when he won the fight. Uh, I was watching that back then. And and I'm not blowing smoke up you, but you never cease to amaze me. You, you must do nothing all goddamn day but look and study history, the the, the historical facts that you know. About, in this case, about <laughs> Oscar, yeah. about criminals, about right. this. You, you know, How do you, I know that? Fucking Medici, probably. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. What are you guys talking about with that like, murders? <laughs> you know, I used to think I was a good fight fan, but damn, I'm sitting here listening to you, and, and there's just so it's many. It's amazing how I, I and, yeah. and I, you know, I don't study it or anything. I think it just comes around, or sometimes on the phone you can look it up like that, but um, not easy for Oscar, because even you think you win the gold medal, what about... He got his ass kicked by that guy from Germany. Germany who never yeah. gotten his ass kicked before. Yeah, that would have scared the shit out of me. As he said, he walked oh in the ring and yeah. saw him. Oh my god! And then he's like, Hi. he's looking around. <laughs> he's kicking everybody's ass. And then he's like, "Where's Germany?" Yeah, he said, "Like, where's the guy from Germany?" And it was the guy that he was going to fight. Yeah, that was awesome. And that's that. Mo that could put a lot of guys out. Just, just that, you know. I, I went back and watched it again because I'd seen it before, the press conference and the fight between him and Mayorga. And it was awesome, you know, knowing the background on it, you know, again, yeah. listening to what he said here, it, it was it was all around. But also, show. you know, like he said, you know, like um, from Tuesday on, you can't be around anybody because you're, you're essentially like a wild animal. Like a racehorse. Yeah, you know, yeah. in the pen or whoever's around you, big, sweet. Um, I think you, I mean, I don't know what the, everybody's routine is, but you probably sleep. You don't really work out a lot, but you got to do a little cardio. And then at the weigh-in, you can't like the Pacquiao way in. He took his robe off and he looked incredible. Like the way he said the other guy looked ripped, he looked like that. But nobody knew he was dehydrated because mm -hmm. he had gotten to the weight maybe a month early, and he got there too early. And then he had to try to keep the weight off, and he was dehydrated. So when he took his robe off and he went like that, he was he was chiseled. And then when he got into the ring, he had like flab on his belly and his back. And it was from the hydration and eating mm. yeah. that he just put on 13, 20 pounds maybe in a day. 
That's it's what crazy, happened to me. The stuff people. <laughs> God, <bro>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah. Uh, so that was not a, a good fight. I didn't know that he felt like he had been forced to retire. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that either. I just thought that was a, a tough fight and that maybe it was, you know, his time. But nothing in his life seemed easy, even from starting the fight to losing his mother and the gold medal and all that stuff. And then through, you know, not being considered Mexican enough by the Mexicans and then beating Chavez twice. And the second time he said he beat him. I think the most, one of the most interesting turns is Chavez, which makes you really happy that a sure. guy like that finally found somewhere, and even the place he's trained to be clean and to help other people be clean, because that dude sure. was... Otherwise, he'd be dead pretty soon. He'd be dead, mm -hmm. yeah. He'd be dead. But that's, I mean, you know, he was going to fight. I'm not sure. I haven't talked to him. If he's going to continue maybe to fight later, I think Holyfield is taking his... his uh, yes, Holyfield, they've announced it. That's oh, really? Yeah. I didn't see a whole field's going to fight. Uh, was it Belfort who he was going to fight? Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah. Okay. That's a good fight. Then would Holyfield fight Oscar? Oh, no. That's that's a tough one. I think fighting this got to be the toughest. I can't imagine. I, I just can't imagine. As a detective, you do you get shot? You never got shot at by a criminal, right? Because you guys usually come in when it's over. Yeah, when I get there, he's dead. My he's day, be, gone. my day begins when theirs ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. That's um, and then, so let's say something happened. I mean, okay, a couple of things happened this last week or so. Momo, uh, and thank God, you know, he eats every hour, you know, small meals. Uh, <laughs> but he was at the Ha Ha Cafe, and those comedians that, unfortunately, there were four of them. Oh, yeah. And then three passed, and then the girl. The girl is, lived. In, it lived. Mm -hmm. But uh, the girl said to Momo, you know, can I go on ahead of you because I'm going to go with these guys. And they went to Venice, and they got uh, Coke with phenyl in it. I yeah, mean, yeah. Um, what's the investigation of that? Well, what are the so you go over there? I mean, that had to be quite a sight, man, to see people OD. I, I I don't know what happened. You probably throw right. up or convulse, and well, you're gonna look around. You you know, ODs usually have frothy mouth. You know, they they, they get froth coming out of their mouth. That's what you gonna, can tell. Yeah, you're gonna look around, and if there's no signs of violence, you know, no no signs, okay. nothing disruptive, nothing's out of the ordinary. Well, then you got to think, okay, you're thinking possibly OD. So when you think possibly OD, then you got to do victim out, find out, hey, did these guys use drugs? You know, were they into drugs? You know, you got to find out their victimology, what they're about. And then if there's no other, because you go in it looking at it as a murder. Okay. But you're eliminating why it's not a murder. Okay. I don't see acts of violence. I don't see a break in. I don't see any defensive wounds. You have to look if there's any left on yeah. the table or any on the. I don't see any of this. Is there debris? What you're talking about, left over on the table, is there any packets, any this, any that? And then once you get to that determination, if there's no other explanation obvious to you, well, then you wait for a toxicology. And then the tox will come back and tell you if it is an OD or not. And then, depending on how far they want to take it, you know, if there's some evidence that comes up right away, where did the dope come from? Oh, you know, can an OD be case closed if, if, if it comes back yeah. and they OD'd and you're just like, okay, well, they OD'd? Yeah. The only one that I've ever seen prosecuted that went beyond just an OD was John Belushi. I was going to say, yeah. John Belushi's uh, was... Oh, what happened there? Well, they got the girl that Kathy gave him the shot. Smith. Kathy, Kathy uh, Smith. Smith. It was Smith's last name that that gave him the the juice, and, and that's what that's what happened. They prosecuted her. That's the only one that I've seen, yeah. that, uh, to my recollection. They were together, like they were out together that night. Him and a, a few other well, uh, well-known people. I think Richard yeah. Pryor was one of them, and they were at the comedy store. And then he left. No, did Richard Pryor use dope? Uh, occasion, I heard occasion. <laughs> yeah. There's rumors. Yeah, uh, on occasion, you know, mm. just a, as a pick me up, you know, long days on the set. <laughs> um, but brilliant comedian, though. brilliant, oh, yeah. troubled. Again, uh, sure. but uh, Seems let's to be see. A correlation here. Correlation, of, <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, she went. She went to prison. Um, so did she like knowingly give him? Was it yeah. bad, bad drugs or, or bad? No, it was no, it was, it was. 
I don't remember if it was an heroin overdose. and cocaine. Yeah, but I don't. It may have just been an overdose. Yeah, too much. I, I I really don't remember the facts. I remember I was working homicide at the time because we screwed with our team lieutenant. I wasn't part of it, but the guys called him up and said, "Hey, we in, you know pretending to be a news station." He was at home, called him up, said, hey, we'd like a statement, you know, on the murder of John Belushi. He says, hey, that wasn't my case. Well, we have you down as making a statement. Yet. And he says, you don't understand. And they said, no, we do. What do you want us to say? Your name is down here. And she says, I got nothing to say. He hung up and he called the bureau and he's all pissed off. He says, who in the hell is giving out my name? Yet? And so the lieutenant that was on duty there called the guys at the Code 7, which is the local bar down the street. At first in Los Angeles, called him up and said, "Okay, guys, stop fucking with them." That's what it was called, Code Seven. Yeah, it's eh? called the Code it's Seven. Still there? Uh, no, it's it's gone. And that's where the new police department. Uh, oh, nah. yeah. <laughs> they should have just left it in there like a food court. They even had a sandwich in there named after me. They did. What? Yeah, it was the team team Gil Creo Team Three. It was roast beef, cheese, uh, Ortega chilies, the the whole oh, chilies yeah. on there, oh, yeah. grilled, wow. grilled. Oh, it was good. Wow, it was real good. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. That sounds great. Was that like an order that you got a lot, or did they just name one after you? They they named I I loved it so much when they redid their menu. They said, we're going to name it after you. Oh, that's all I ever read. The ultimate there. honor. Dude, it, take it, it chili. What was it? They're from the can or take it or they? They it, probably. Uh, they, it just it was longer. Hot, it's a longer long green. chile. Yeah, but it's not a jalapeno chile. What is that? No, no, uh, it's just. Uh, it, it would be like, chili. yeah, it's it's long, kind of like over here they call them Anamite, Anaheim chilies, green chili Ortega, or I just, I almost sent you a picture. You could have seen a picture of me the other day. I roasted two 25-pound boxes of Hatch chili from New Mexico. Right, oh. there you go. Hatch. Yeah, that, that's that's the best of the but best. But chile relleno is with the cheese. Cheese inside, inside the chili. Inside of it and then. Dip it in egg and then they fry it. That's, that's pretty good. Too. Oh, good they're too. the bomb. The, you know where they make a good one? My favorite? At Mario's Tacos, where we brought the burritos in that day. Yeah. They, oh, make yeah. a, they make a good one. I'll stop by. Next time I come in, I'll Have you been over there at Steven's Steakhouse since we talked last? <laughs> yeah. I, I was just there the other day. I, I was just there the other day. And what's going on over there? Steven's Steakhouse is doing, they're alive and well. They're doing good. I met some guy there, uh, an old Vietnam buddy of my, well, the wow. buddy. I hadn't seen him since Vietnam. And he's got a son. Uh, that lives in West Hollywood. He's quadriplegic. This guy lives back in Michigan, but his son wants to be independent. He's doing well. You know, he comes out here, he pays 24-hour care for him. He wants to be on his own. He wants to be able to go places, do stuff. So he says, hey, I'm going to be out there for a few days. How about let's hook him up? I haven't, haven't seen him since Vietnam. So we went to Stephen's Steakhouse. And then Friday, when they shut me down from uh, yeah my heart procedure, my daughter said... We better go get something good to eat. And I said, okay, let's go to Steven's Steakhouse. Oh, because you had you had to uh, fast. Yeah, I had to fast. So I hadn't had, since 6 o'clock in the morning, not even water across my lips. Wow. And it's now 6 o'clock in the evening. I said, let's go to Steven's. I can oh, give me a glass of wine, nice okay. steak. It was good. So when's the, when's the procedure scheduled for now? They're supposed to call me up today and reschedule it. And it can't be this week because I'm going to be out of town, but it'll be the next week. And, and you feel you feel okay just yeah. the way you are, but yeah. when that's done, you're going to feel a lot better, won't you? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I'm looking forward. I'm I'm excited. I just want to get it done. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's it's um, crazy times right now. Huh? The nine eleven. So so okay. So the comedians there. Um. Yeah, that one girl is in there. Ah, man. I mean, that's that shit is. They're cutting it with Fenelon? This yeah. Fenelon came out long after I was a cop. But it's supposed to be some nasty stuff. You, you know, the people are OD and left and right over that shit. I mean, it's crazy. It's just like 10,000 times more effective than other, I guess, opioids or something like heroin? whatever it is. Yeah, like, and they can manufacture it themselves. It's crazy. Is it, it's super concentrated. Yeah. It's, it's like a tiny pill, but it's like... And Man. that that's what they suspect was it Michael K. Williams passed away from as well. Yes. O Omar from The Wire. He, yeah. he passed yesterday, two days yesterday. ago. Was yeah. that heroin or was that was his heroin? He he had been, I think they said he had been using, he Pretty knew problem. he had an addiction, knew he had a problem, and he was using cocaine. Man, it's very sad, man. This stuff is out there. It's killing people. 
coast to coast and it's it's rough i think a lot of people too bring a lot of like judgment to people who die like that's like oh just goes to show you don't do drugs something sort of simple like that but it always feels i don't know to me it always rings way more tragic than that as long as they're not ripping me off burglarizing they they do what they got to do it doesn't affect me yeah so i think with him they were trying to pursue um the person that may have given it to him Hmm. and and now with with these community, you're the first guy I thought of, and, and I didn't even think about Momo at first. And then I look at that last picture, uh, one of the pictures of a poster recently. Momo's way in the back, and I made some comment. He looks bigger in the in the mirror, you know. Than, oh yeah, yeah. And and so, uh, how does this affect the comedic uh, world? You know, his friends. You know, you, you knew these guys. You know? I didn't know them personally, but uh, I think. I think there might have been owners or friends of the people that own the Haha ha Cafe. The day that you came in here after the anniversary of uh, Kobe, you were visually affected. You know, you were sad, and I could being around you. You know, it was a tough. It was a little harder than your regular day, uh, but I, I just didn't know if it affected you with these people in the comedic world. Uh, yeah, not, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, it's a pretty, it's not, a, it's really kind of not a close community, right? I mean, it's, a, I don't know if it's ever been. Yeah, I mean, you, you tell me, right? I mean, like, I know. It a long time. I, I don't think it's a close community. I think that, um, you know, there's some people that are friends and some people that, there were a lot of them in Vegas last weekend that I was there, like Joe Coy was over there and then those guys were out there, Maz, Joe Brani, and then those guys, but, uh, you know, even Ruben, like Ruben's with me, it's a different show. You go, you come to the backstage. There's nobody in there, very few people. Yeah. So I think over there, those guys are used to maybe more uh, camaraderie than what I have because I've been doing it for so long that you do the show and kind of lock it down, have a couple of drinks, relax, and then go back to the room because it's like, what are you going to try to prove? And yeah, in one it, night, if anything, it just of, feels like it gets a little lonely. Did you get time to people. deliver any tacos when you were over there? You know what? I did not, man. That that thing fell through. Huh. But the tacos are doing good for grub or next bite. So yeah, I didn't. Yeah, keep keep know, buying. My George daughter, I hope she listens to this podcast next week because she keeps telling me, "Oh, Dad, I went and bought all the carne asada they had at the store. I bought them out. I bought about ten packs. That's all they had left till they get some more in." And so now, officially on record, I hope she understands that her dad likes that stuff. Maybe she could, you know, cut a cut a package for her dad. Right? Yeah, you'd think. Hint, hint, the carne asada was pretty good, man. It got in by Arthur restaurants. It's it's uh, that, and that was a tough one um, to get into. But they, you know, the prices are, you know, it's like Momo keeps uh, track of the price of carne asada like gold. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, right now, carne asada is up, and you're, 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 you're down. So a lot of people are trying yours. You know, I keep track of it every day. You know that that, that like. You know, like gold. You're, you're, you're. You came out at the right time. It's like the market is dipping, so I see opportunity here. <laughs> so we'll have to see what um, transpires and all this stuff. But you know, yeah, it's a part of uh, of these things that I mean, Prince. You know, I knew Prince. That was that was uh, Fenlon related because mm-hmm. you know he had a hip replacement, mm-hmm. and he was really. You know, very, uh, I mean, elusive, elusive character, kind of. But, but, you know, in that time, I'm not sure. I think it's gotten better. But if you got a hip replacement, you had to go back in there at least one or two times to go and get a tweak because it's not something that you went in there and they did right the first time. Oh, really? I mean, Paul Stanley, you know, Kiss had uh, his hip replaced and had to go in a couple times, maybe have a couple procedures, and lost half an, half an inch on that leg. So oh, wow. st- as a performer, you'd, you'd have to put like a half an inch spacer in the shoe or the boot and now to balance them out. But he went in there, you know, the legs were the same length and then came out there and there was one half an inch shorter. So, I mean, it's, they, what I think they've gotten better at it, but it, it took a little maintenance and I think he didn't want to do that. And he was trying to s- kind of self-medicate or self, you know, kind of take the pain away yourself. Yeah. You better hope that doctor would self-medicate him Man. <laughs> before they went into surgery. If he's back in that room going, <laughs> <laughs> is he out yet? Just tell him there's I an mean, emergency. It's hard, to, it's hard to trust anybody now, you know. 
before you would be concerned with what the doctor's credentials are. And now there's people that are doctors and they're in fucking shopping centers, man. They're in, you know. You know, the, the good thing is with my procedure, the lady that they came to advise, her, her husband had done, he's still alive, you yeah, know, done good. They <laughs> <laughs> hit her knee. Okay. And, that's, that's... But that doctor was the same doctor and this, it was his valve that was messed up. So it was the same doctor who do my procedure was working on him. And he had another emergency back to back. So I'm sitting there saying in the back of my mind too, I don't maybe I don't want this doctor after he's done two surgery. Like, right. get some get some rest. Right, yeah. right, right, right. I you think know, that that's good that, thinking. There's probably some of those at ten hours at a time. So you yeah. you've done something you want to so do. So let's just wait until you're well rested. Yeah. Would you look up fentanyl? Uh, yeah, I, I looked it up. I was curious about it. The when did it? When did it? How long has it been out? Uh, let's see. So it was originally made because it's a synthetic chemical in 1960, and it was approved for medical use 1968. Um, oh, man. And it's just been slowly going up since then. But only, uh, only recently has it been the big sort of like um, illegal drug, overdose drug, and has since 2016 been the most common cause of overdose deaths. More than 20,000 of opioid related deaths. Which is about half, so about forty thousand deaths in that time. And it's much easier to get. Uh, I believe it's easier to get on the street. On yeah. the street, they're cutting it with it. They're cutting cocaine with it. Yeah. The last line of the the Wikipedia summary says, "Compared to heroin, it's more potent, has higher profit margins, and because it's compact, has simpler logistics, can be cut into or even replace entirely the supply of heroin and other opiates." Huh. So it's just the perfect thing to go wrong in every every situation. Man, that's. What's going on with that? And I think, you, think, you think the pandemic has anything to do with people using or bored out of boredom? How would you want to? I've, I've definitely read that like rates of whatever have gone up over the past you know eighteen months. People just trying to cope. I don't know because I don't I don't think like them. You know I gotta think otherwise. So I don't know what they're what's going through their mind. The, the devil's workshop is an idle mind. So if yeah. you got an idle mind, you know you you may do stuff that you wouldn't want to do normally. Yeah, I but mean, is it not me? I mean, are you saying I, I found myself drinking more wine during the pandemic? I think it's good for you. Yeah, I think that's anything that can relax you. But that you know, uh, you wanted to back off of uh, of extinguishing your 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 light in there. But it, all of that stuff, and then uh, I think after the drug dealer for Michael K. Williams, I think they're going to try to find. Are out they? That, yeah. Well, they they also found the drug dealer for the Angels, the supplier. They're going after him. The angel baseball player that lost his life, they, they're going after him. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't hear that. He was part of the staff. Oh, he was part of the staff? Yeah, he was in the locker room there. He was part of the locker room staff. That, bro, that's a violation. <laughs> Man. You always got to know somebody where you can get the stuff from, but I mean, yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't want it to damage anybody. But uh, different, uh, different times for sure, man. Shit. And even, I don't know, do people, do younger people just do it, just to do it to have fun? Do they go to Vegas and are they? I mean, they call them recreational drugs for a reason, right? Like, I don't know. I don't run in those circles, you know. I don't know. And, and, and I, I don't know so, anybody that does, you know, so it, it's hard for me to say. It's hard for me to judge. I know you see people, uh, I get concerned when I see people that are acting angry, they're paranoid, they're this or that, you know, that's, that's a good indicator. Yeah. There, there's something else going on. Well, I think if, if um, we live in these times where even your neighbors, I mean, I don't know any of my neighbors. I don't want to know my neighbors. They're, you know, they might have mistaken me a couple of weeks ago for not living in my house. That's not good. Uh, like what? every everything that a neighborhood used to be is to me is not anymore. Like you no. would love thy neighbor, treat your neighbor as you would treat your your for yourself, your family. Yeah. Just a lot of people out there concerned about other people's business. Sure. Um, you know, even in pet adoption, you know, we have that girl in here that people are returning their dogs or even returning them or letting them go because of of what's going on. It's on the news right now that they're having problems with them. And I, I want to say, I don't know if it's the county or somebody adoption age is now starting to... They're going to evaluate whether exactly. if he needs to come back. Well, then they're just going to fucking let him go on yeah. Griffith Park like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're trying to take him back with some dignity. And they go like, oh, well, you know, we, we evaluated that. You know, you you, you, you you can watch this dog. All right. And then, 
man. Tough time. What do we have? Do we have voicemails and all uh, that? Yeah, stuff? we got some Ready voicemails. Little, we can do articles. We can do uh, whatever. I, I don't think we've gotten more again. from the 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 puta. Uh, <laughs> hey, but she is welcome anytime. Uh, in training, PIT. Put that in training. <laughs> yeah, good. Let's see. Let's oh, see. also, Gil, Gil was telling me off mic a crazy story about a Michael Mann movie that he worked on. I wanted yeah. to bring. I don't know if you wanted to. Sure, if I you want to recount it. This was fascinating. It, it was Michael Mann uh, during the movie Heat. Oh yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, Did you work on Heat? Yeah, I worked on he Heat. Worked on Heat. And uh, showing them how to do some interviews. So they wanted me to sit down. It was supposed to be myself and my old partner Gil Parra. Gil Parra was sick. He was fighting cancer at the time. So they said, Gil, you go in there, and we'll get a captain that's out here. He's a friend of Michael Mann. He's a captain from Chicago PD. You and him do this interview. And I'm saying, Michael, you know, Chicago works different. We, we, we don't put hands on people over here. They put hands on people. And he said, no, it'll work out. It'll work out. He brought with him his wise guy friend. The guy was a wise guy back in Chicago. So we're sitting down there, and I start asking him, you know, we're doing an interview. They're filming it. You got actors. You got Pacino. They're all watching. They're all watching right there, Michael T., and so I started asking this guy a question. He says, you lead the question. So I started asking the guy a question, but he, he's playing hardball. He's playing like an old con, you know. What's your name? Bobby. Bobby, do you have a last name? Yeah. Well, what is it? Smith. Where do you live? On the east side. You know, not giving me answers that I want. So he's playing hardball. So I had had that day, I had a buddy of mine, Bobby Tucson, covering an autopsy for me. But it was a simple autopsy. It was a gunshot wound through and through to the head. So I said, I'm going to go over here. i got to do this, Bobby. Would you cover the autopsy for me? He says, no problem. So we're sitting there, and I'm talking. And the captain realizes that this guy from Chicago is being a wise guy. He's being an asshole. So he just reaches up and slaps him across the <laughs> face hard. Just reaches up, motherfucker, bam. And just then my beeper's going off. Because we used to use beepers back then, pagers. So my pager's going off, and I saw it. I said, oh. I said, excuse me, gents, I'll be right back. i got to answer this page. So I got up and I walked away from the table, and there was a phone, public phone on the wall behind us. So I go back there, and I call the guy up. I said, hey, Bobby, you called? He says, yeah, I just just like you called the, you know, the autopsy, and then all of a sudden you hear this, ah, screaming going on. He says, Gil, where you at? What's going on? Give, give me an address. I said, no, 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 Bobby, I'm on a movie set. Don't worry, everything's okay. And... He says, okay, well, just like you said, it was going to be any, and then you hear this blood curdling scream worse than the first one. He says, Gil, give me an address. We'll send the cops down there. I'll be rolling right now. Yeah, da, da. And then you hear Michael Matt saying, okay, cut, cut, cut. And I said, you see, Bobby, it was just, it's, it's movie stuff. What not, did he do? He fucking had him down on the ground? He had, he, had a, uh, he had his balls oh. in his hand. And he says, motherfucker, you got something I want, and I got something you want. Now, I want the information in your fucking head right now. And then he gives him another twist. And the guy, blood curling, screaming. He says, Michael Mann, this is okay. Cut, cut, cut. Yeah. That was good. That was good. And uh, it was, it was brilliant. Then I interviewed uh, Danny Trejo. In that movie, Danny was one of the bad guys. Yep. And Danny, as we know, did time in the joint. Yep. He's a dropout. So Danny's right there. I start interviewing him. All of a sudden, I just tell him, you know, he's not coming across real good. And I told him, you, you see a P on my forehead? You see a tattoo of a P? And he says, no. I said, that's because I'm not a pendejo. I said, you're going back to where you came from when I'm done with you. It treats you like a little chavala in there. This guy starts sweating. Michael Mann says, cut. Danny looks at me and says, ching, God, I haven't felt like that. For years, man, I felt like I was back in it all again. You were sweating the shit out of me. And that was all part of just... Of just the prep? Yeah, so they could see what it was like to interview people. And uh, Al Pacino, nice guy, give me a hug. He says, God damn, you're great. You know, I said, well, not great. That, that's just, that's the job. I do this for a living. You act, I do that for a living. Wow. So it was pretty cool. But there is a way to cut through the bullshit of somebody trying to stall a police officer out. Oh, sure. You, you, you're not going to be able to stall a cop out. Yeah. If you're good, if you can... They know the answer already before they're asking you. Oh, sure. They're not, yeah. Sure. The, uh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to ask a question you don't know the answer to. Right. Right. Well, you know, Danny, you know, I you met Danny and known him for a while. 
and he said that when they were doing heat, they went into a restaurant. I don't want to say the restaurant because it could still be something that, you know. And uh, Danny was acting in the restaurant, and he he's looking around. He's like, he's like, shit. I think we we robbed this place. <laughs> <laughs> Before, well, you know, back did. in the day, we, we went we went into a restaurant during the shooting of the movie. We they called it want to have dinner, and it was myself and two other homicide cops, my partner Gil Parr, and a guy named Ray Verdugo. And we go down there, and we're having dinner at this restaurant, and they just want to see how we interact because these guys right. are gonna be cops. So we're talking, we're telling stories, telling jokes. And then Michael T, that's the guy that came out as Bubba Gump, and mm -hmm. he, 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 tells a, yeah. he tells a story about when he was in Georgia, because that's where they filmed a lot of the movie. He says, we're down there. He says, one day after a long day of shooting, he says, you know, we get ready to leave. I see some extra that had been there all day, and, you know, he's having car trouble. And so I just walked out. I said, hey, pal, you need a ride? And I can give you a ride back in town if you want. And the guy says, oh, would you? And he says, yeah. He says, come on. Says, okay. And then the guy runs back to his car real quick. He forgot a bag. So he got the bag, and got inside Michael T's car and he started driving and Michael T says he keeps noticing the guy keeps opening up the bag and looking inside finally Michael T says hey partner if you don't mind me asking him it must be something important what you got in the bag there he says the guy looked at me and said none of your business he says I slammed on the motherfucking brakes of, get the fuck out of my car right now motherfucker get your own ride the guy steps out of the car Michael T punches it the guy left the bag inside the car Oh. And so he drove away, and I said, no shit. He left the bag inside the car, and I said, did you ever look inside? He says, yeah, I did. I said, what was inside? He says, none of your business, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't tell you? Oh, dude. No, great fucking, it was just a joke. Oh, it was a joke. He just reeled me in, and when you asked, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. none of your business, motherfucker. Classic. It was a great joke. That's fantastic. Well, you know, I, uh, in, in keeping with that, I... Know a ex athlete that the time of the O.J. Uh, Simpson uh, alleged uh, double homicide, that a girl that was allegedly involved with O.J. Simpson ended up with that Louis Vuitton suitcase, mm -hmm. and she had it at her house, and then she knew this ex football player. And she asked if he could keep it at his house until they needed it. And he said yes. So he kept it in his garage. I think it was in the garage for two years. And I said, you ever look inside of that thing? He said, never. Because I put it in the garage, I put it on the shelf, and I tried to pretend it wasn't there. But I looked, I'd have looked inside. That's oh, tough to pretend it's not there. No, fuck. I mean, that's the most infamous piece of yeah. evidence Oh my God. That, I mean, it came back from Chicago. I thought it came back with anything in there, maybe. I mean, that's stuff you can't close or, I mean, a weapon. I mean, you think he ditched that thing at the airport? The I bag? have no idea where he ditched it, what he did with it. I just, there's no doubt in my mind as to his innocence or guilt. And and you, the only thing I want to clarify, you said the two alleged homicides. There was no alley. Oh, yeah. It was, they, they were definitely they were homicides. Dead. Yeah, they were yeah, yeah. The homicide Alleged is just involvement. A, yeah, that, that's just a definition. A homicide is just a definition of death at the hands of another. So, so as you get, you know, as we get further away from an event, you know, there's more factual information comes out. I think people are more ready to be truthful. And there's one on OJ that is either on the History Channel or Discovery. And... Uh, a guy that he knows says in the documentary, so if she hadn't have answered the door with a knife in her hand, she'd still be alive? And that uh, he said, most likely, yes. Hmm. I think I think somebody, you know, when it's like you go over to somebody's house and they got a baseball bat in their hand and you're like, what, what the fuck, what you got the bat for? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what you want. You're like, I don't, you don't know what I want. And then it turns you into yeah. It turns into an adversarial. Just start things on that note. Yeah, right. I mean, I think you've seen it. Um, I'm glad it was my case. Can yeah. people get away yeah. with murder these days? Very tough. Very tough. tough. And the biggest giveaway is they talk. Everybody talks. Right. Whether it be to your homeboy who you love, he'll, he'll die. Take it to his grave. They don't take shit to their grave. What the, what what what, uh, what police procedure that I think is brilliant is they put. An informer in the cell, either with the guy or 
on the cell next door, right? The guys want to talk. They talk sure. to. Yeah, they, they're talking to an they, informant. They talk, and now with social media. Psh, yeah, forget it. Yeah, they talk on social media. They do a lot. So it's it's tough to get away with it today. In Manson, the Susan Atkins w- was in a uh, in the cell with a woman that was like I think a. a, a she was an actress, but she oh, was yeah, kind of yeah, like, a whore, yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a prostitute. And then yeah. she told her, and that woman was doing, you know, and even as an older woman, she was still kind of very attractive, you know. Yes. So she had some information, and she said, call that sheriff over here. I got some information you might have. And that started the whole, because they didn't really know who, I mean, the police back there was different but that was that was the not bad mouthing point. not not bad mouthing any particular agency but that was the one where the news people found that clothes that had been thrown over the side that cops had overlooked they didn't they didn't uh put the bobby Beausoleil topanga canyon guy where they killed a the guy chopped off his ear they didn't put they wrote they wrote something on the wall in blood there over there in the cielo and then over there by me and Los Feliz, the, the um, uh, be, uh, La Bianca, um, they wrote in there, and nobody nobody put them together. And Manson was at the La Bianca; he was in there, and then he he left. Like they were down there, yeah, working on stuff. But I wanted that refrigerator. I don't know where it ended up. The one with the misspelled Helter Skelter on it. Helter Skelter. That was a good book. I could ask Charles, I said, but he passed. He was a big fan of mine, John yeah. Wayne, <laughs> Frank Sinatra, and Classic Rock. All right, what, what do we have? <laughs> All right, speaking of Classic Rock, number one. Let's get into it here. Oh, my God. Hi, George. Uh, this is Rudy Salinas calling from uh, Mission, Texas. Hey, I know you're a Kiss fan. Uh, just wanted to know what fan, what's puto? one of your favorite all-time Kiss songs and uh, your favorite album. All right, George, thank you so much for your podcast. I appreciate you and the Gill and all your staff. You got some great entertainment. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. What's that dude's name? Uh, oh, I didn't get it. I don't think he gave it. Maybe. Uh, for Mission Texas. Uh, let's see. Were you ever into Kiss like that? You ever no. into Rock? No. You were into the like, Midnighters. I was it. Midnighters, and Tierra, and Tierra, 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 all the good music, the Temptations. Brothers That Don't Talk. Uh, yeah. One of them checked out too, huh, Rudy? Rudy. Rudy died last, this last year. Yeah, man. On his anniversary, went up to uh, was celebrating his winning anniversary. Went up to the hotel room, a little tired, and then. Yeah, that's uh, you. You never know when it's gonna. No, I remember watching them when they were the Salas Brothers, little kids, over in East LA. And then they became Tierra. Great song. Great song. Yes. And then they didn't talk as brothers, huh? They they had problems. They had personal problems between the familia, between the two brothers. Yeah. And so then they split. Rudy stood with but, the group, and Rudy continued to play. You didn't hear from Stevie much, and now Stevie is back in the fold, and now he's singing back. back but, I mean, all those years go by that you let, sure. you know, Oasis with the, the Gallagher brothers. That those is. guys, Oasis, great, you know, band, and the Supersonic, that, that documentary is awesome. And then uh, two years ago, I went to go see The Who at the Hollywood Bowl, and that guy, Liam, yes. opened up. No, the one that's the more of a puto uh, than the other one. Is it, I think, Liam Gallagher? Is he the? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> and he went out there, and he had these glasses on. This dude's, he would have been a good Chicano, too. He had a <coughs> buttoned up to the top. He's got his hands in his pocket, and he sings kind of like this with these glasses on. And... Uh, he just left the stage. He's like, that's all cunts. <laughs> <laughs> he walks up. And people are like, what? What's that? What do you call us, cunts? That's all, you cunts. <laughs> and he walks off, and it's like the end of the, you know, nobody really claps because they're like, hey, hey the five, fuck you. Don't call us that. We'll play, we'll play yeah. But he's, he was great. But he's, got, he's one of those guys that has a... I, he's just got this fucking attitude, man. Very British, like. Uh, uh, yeah, always just had some sort of chip on his shoulder. Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever entered a show like that? That's all kinds. I, I called the lady a twat uh, <laughs> just uh, less than a week ago. <laughs> so Tw- you know, twat did she say? <laughs> uh, twat was silent. <laughs> twat, not twat, not a Christmas. So um, let's see, Kiss. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, um, Kiss. I became a Kiss fan when I saw them in 1973. Either Don Kirshner's or. In concert on ABC, and then they came out with like they had some songs. I think maybe Rock and Roll All Night Classic. was a big one, and then they 
I went to go see him. It was my first concert in 1976 at the Forum. Um, I think maybe Rock and Roll. Is that the one that I see? Him? Then I see him now, and I go, which one's the one? Yeah, I think maybe Detroit Rock City or one of those. About a guy that, oh, Detroit Rock City. About a guy that was on the way to see the concert, and he crashed, and they wrote a song about it. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that's what yeah. that was. Oh, so, cool. wow. yeah, you know, we were all Kiss Freaks. That's what they, they didn't call them Kiss fans. They called you a Kiss Freak. Uh, so... But I stayed loyal to I stayed loyal I stayed loyal to those guys uh, uh, my whole my whole life and then I think Paul got COVID oh really uh, and then they canceled some dates and then Gene got COVID and uh, Gene's a guy with a big lingua isn't yeah he? he's the tongue guy <laughs> and uh, they suspended some dates I think it's going to be really tough for I mean yeah man you know you're talking about you know. 12,000, 14,000 people together in the same room. I mean, it's, it's... I mean, they just had the first weekend of college football, right? And it was like, oh, I saw some 110,000 people at the Michigan Michigan or Michigan State game. That's the one that we only fucked Joe Biden? Probably, probably <laughs> one of them. What a country. <laughs> what a country we're living in. Before you could agree to disagree, now they're like... They weren't uh, saying recall Governor Newsom. Fuck! They weren't saying recall Governor Newsom, all that. We'll see what happens. But, I mean, Governor Newsom only has a... A year left, maybe even less than a year, or maybe a year and plus. But let them finish, man. I mean, it's like we have so much. It started with Gray Davis, and it got worse. And then everybody now that is a governor of California, you're almost like walking the plank, man. Yeah. Like, who would want to be governor? Nah, you'd get back and do yeah. it again now. <laughs> <laughs> Let wow. me in there. You know, I, since I left, everything went to shit. I, I <laughs> wanted good. to be... Chief of police. I really, oh. I really want to be chief. I did the interim thing in San Fernando. I want to be chief of police for City of El Monte. Ah. But you could. There's not enough money right now <laughs> to make me chief of police anywhere. I feel sorry for the guys that are working because as soon as you're chief of police, half the people love you, half the people hate you, and, and you're just waiting for them to take you down. Some somebody's going to go after you. Sure. Um, on the thing, you know, there was a there's a thing. It was on Facebook that I saw that uh, a woman has a podcast and then this guy was in there and he said that he auditioned for a job as a writer on my show and that it, the, the, the head of it is George Lopez is racist. And then this guy, who we don't remember, we didn't hire, he said that um, we didn't hire him because we didn't hire white people. And I mean, all of it is a lie. So, you know, it's there. It's got nobody watching it, but it's still there. But everything that that guy says is a lie. You know, so I would challenge that guy, if, I don't know if he's watching this, to come on and, uh, and and tell me your story because I think, you know, somebody put blatantly put lies out there, and the girl too. I mean, if you're going to have information be put out, have it even be remotely riveted in some truth, but that's yeah. that's a lie. Well, yeah. Where did this come from? What was the... It was on... Just a podcast you heard or someone... Yeah, no, so it's a podcast that you interview with a guy, okay. and he says, oh, in you know, 2005, I came out to L.A., and and I was, uh, you know, I had an uh, uh, audition to be a writer on this show, and they didn't hire me because I was white. It's like... But it comes to me, it doesn't... Man, for, and, it's, and it's a lie. Yeah. But as a matter of fact, we had more white writers than we had Latinos. We only had two Latino writers. That's because they didn't know how to write. White writers in Hollywood, I'm sure. And, and you know what I mean? So it's like, that stays out there. And it's a and it's a lie. Like I'll, I've done a lot of stuff that that's been, you know, on the line or over the line, and some I some I acknowledge and some I don't. But lies are lies, and that's and that's a lie. I mean, I'm, yeah. So, you know, I do a yeah. lot of good, but that that for that guy to say that, and me to look at it, it's like that's a hundred percent of a lie. All right, what Amen. what else? Speak on it. Uh, all right, we got another one in the music realm. Here we go. Oh, my God. Hi. Hey, George. This is Bobby G. from Salt Lake City, Utah. Love your podcast. It's cool in Salt Lake. Love Gil Carrillo. Um, but when I think of L.A., I think of the band Los Lobos. I was wondering if you oh, ever yeah. thought about having them on. Anyway, good show, man. I listen all the time. Appreciate you. Bye. Uh, yes, you know Salt Lake City is great. I, you know those, you know those Lobos. I know. I love Los Lobos. I just went to see him in concert two uh, oh, weeks ago. Yeah, that's right. I wanted to go see him two weeks. Did ago. you go backstage and say hello? Or no? no, no, no. We were. We just wanted to get out of there by that time. It was late. At the old. Greek. At the Greek. It was a great show. There, everybody. I was gonna go, man. You know where I was in my room. I didn't think I. I was in my <laughs> self quarantine. That there was some trapo there with a lotion. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I saw my doorbell rings. Ha <laughs> ha. 
They better watch out. There's one DoorDash guy that drives uh, on a hot day. Oh, my God. I'll throw a little bucket, a little something on a little guy. Agarra. The, uh, <laughs> put up and swimming in the pool. Um, yeah, Los Lobos. Yeah, we should we should hit those dudes up. And I know I know those guys. Known them for a long time. Um, I have a pair of my glasses that I got at uh, Oliver Peoples, and I basically buy like two or three of them. So I had these black ones. You know, I went to go see them at the Greek years ago, and uh, the kind of Caesar wears. The kind of Caesar wears. So I go, hey Caesar, I try these on. He goes, oh, these are nice. And I, so those are the ones that Jay Z wears. So Jay Z wears oh, these yeah. big Daddy B's of uh, Oliver Peoples, <laughs> and, I, and he goes, oh, these are nice. I go, you can have them. I goes, what? For reals? Because, you know, then he goes, I go, yeah. I mean, they just look perfect on him. And then he goes, Mija, these are the ones JC wears. Fucking <laughs> 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 Z, motherfucker, JC. <laughs> 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 the fuck, Jesus. Uh, those guys, um, and and uh, the guys even from uh, Los Lonely Boys, too, man. Good, good, oh, they were good. good. Dudes. They, were they good. took a little time yeah. off. I think they're coming back. We, they let us use the song in that Walking with Herb. Um, oh, that's right. I remember you talking about that. Yeah, and he called Ringo called me and said that they were, you know, very moved by the movie and stuff, and that uh, you know they want they thank for being involved. But you know, and even like that, like you know, that's friends. You know, who did it? Pat from Train wrote two songs and let us use "Calling All Angels." Um, that's a relationship, you know, of a friend, and then and then um, the relationship with those lonely boys. But if you try to do that without having a relationship with those guys, there's an, it's an impossible thing to get music in a movie unless you're paying up the ass. Like, oh yeah, you, it's they, crazy uh, expensive. Yo, know, it's like ridiculous, man. Like, if you want to use a song, it. I don't know. It could be. I mean, easy. Like even songs that maybe no one's heard of. Easy five figures. Like once you're getting into if and like if you're, wow. it's going to be in something, you probably want a semi popular song anyway. It's going to cost you at least six figures. So Lee Greenwood wrote, you know, and I'm proud to be in my sure. way at least. So in 2005, I had a joke in my America's Mexican special, and I was using that song and the. the he wanted to know the words. They said, George Lopez wants to use uh, Proud to be an American in his HBO special, but he wants to change the words. And then and then I had to write the words out and then send them to Lee Greenwood, and he he read them and he approved them. You, you, ready, you, ready, you ready to read the words, too? That he approved? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. Can someone get these Mexicans the fuck away from me? And I'll probably stand up next to you and I hear me proudly say, Get them all out of America. God bless the USA. And he was like, Yeah, I can sign up to that. Uh, <laughs> that was said, beautiful. I'm said, so happy yes. you sung yeah, that. Thank you. <laughs> he said it's better. It's better when I do it in front of an audience. <laughs> but I was doing that, just fucking around. And he's like, "Hey," the, I said, "What did he say?" No, he goes, "No." He said, "Yeah, he loved it." Yeah, awesome man. I love this. This is a joke. Yeah, that is great. I bet the internet will love that. Like I will they speak on it. behalf of the internet. They will love Take it. Take that, man. <laughs> yeah. So that they'll, they'll, they'll love that. Have fun with that. But you know, part of the thing that you know, criticism of of me is. You know, uh, um, do they still use the word racist? Uh, anti this, anti Maybe. that. But you have to look at where I came. I came from Richard Pryor. I came from George Carlin, um, Dick Gregory, all those guys. So <clears throat> when people talk about cancel culture or whatever, I think it's almost too late to, you can't reinvent yourself or too late to, you know, once the horse hits the water, change horses, because this is the way it is. People like it. I saw a bunch of tickets. People that don't like it, don't go. And I won't call you. You okay. take you 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 your I mean. your company, you, your company took a lot of my money. Because I used to go see it. I, yeah. I, I had paid to see it at least five five, six times. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, baby. All right. Well, uh, we got a, a very hard hitting question here. Uh oh, kill. Buckle. <laughs> Hey, yo, George, man, calling in from San Diego. Uh, yeah, man, you know, let me get right to it, man. I don't know what it is, man. It's like a routine for me, but I'm like a fucking chronic masturbator, man. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. Chronic. I don't know what's going on with me. It's it's just like, what, what do I do, man? What do I do to fix it? Do I go cold turkey, you know? Do I just like, you know, fucking just stop it right away? 
or do I do like a, the alcoholic shit, you know, be like kind of gradually slow down my role, you know? <laughs> I got What's a simple answer. Doing that? <laughs> if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Yeah, yeah I think, well, well, how many, what's chronic? Yeah. It, it sounded like, I mean, a, a couple times a day he was saying. Which, I mean, I don't know. Is it bad for you? If, if, you're, I, if, if you're that's married? a crime officer, lock me up. Right? <laughs> shit. As long as he's doing it to himself and he's in private, who cares? I don't care if he does it six times a day. I think when you start counting, it looks bad. Yeah, that's a good mm. point. You know, <laughs> saying, it's like six times in a day, man. What the hell? He's got like a very sticky notebook that he's tracking. Yeah, <laughs> you know, hand towels around. They, they, but uh, um, is it bad for somebody to do that that much? I mean, people used to say, what was it, Harry Palms, bad eyesight, but that was just sort of old wives' tales. I but know, also, what happened. is it if you're, you know... I know I caught my son... You know, I told him, I said, son, uh, stop doing that. You'll need glasses. He said, hey, Dad, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> What's in the bag? Don't fucking worry about it. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say that. Too. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I, you know, I I don't know, man. I, I think if you do when you're married, <laughs> I, I, at least I know when I was married that she considered that being unfaithful to her. That was, really? That I was with myself. Oh, man. The, the rules there were not since the, the fucking like, Alabama pen, penitentiary. <laughs> it was like she convicted oh, it was of thought crime. It was awful. It was pretty bad in there. I'm glad I got out. 17 I, years, I did. I, w I would love to hear more from this guy, hear a little bit about why he thinks it's a problem. Yeah, but I don't think it's a problem. Because I have yet to see the issue. If here. he's not yeah. bothering anybody else, hey, it's, but, it but, ain't no problem. But what about medically? Is it medically an issue? Can you can you masturbate too much medically? Uh, can you either pull a vein or, you know... Tell yeah. him to use lotion. Yeah, you can get like a friction burn or something. But what about this? Does it, does, it, um, does it make you desire... Things less like a woman or a person or somebody. If you're doing that all the time, if you're self satisfying yourself, does it affect your relationship you might be having with your wife or girlfriend or who or whoever? It depends think? what he's thinking about when he's masturbating. Right. You know, I, I I really can't answer that. And if he thinks it's maybe a problem, well then seek professional help. But if not, yeah. if he's only bothering himself, there I don't see anything wrong with it. Yeah, if he's like masturbating about the idea of like breaking up with his girlfriend, then maybe there's more issues at play here. <laughs> but it's. It depends as long as he's not so. thinking about some little kid. But he says chronic, though. I mean, that, that, that's that got to be high up, the double digits, maybe. Wow. But you don't want to be doing it by a window. You he's going to get hemorrhoids. He's going to get can't hemorrhoids. Pull, you can yeah. pull some little pebbles out of there, huh? <laughs> well, I, I, he didn't leave his name either. I think wisely so. But uh, our message to him is, what's the problem? Our message is, uh, you know, WebMD. Let's we'll look, look it up and see if... There you go. If, you, if it's... If it ain't broke, it? yeah. Can we yeah. look it up and see if? Uh, Actually, yeah, I can. I can check that real quick. Look, look and see. You guys, vamp for a sec. Let me see if it's on. What I'm doing. Can you masturbate too much medically? These guys, man. I mean, uh, in my business, these guys have great products, and then they want to come on the podcast and, you know, l launch. But, you know, this isn't a place to launch products. This is a podcast we talk about issues so if this is you know no offense to people i'm doing business with but if this is part of the launch it's not right this yeah. would be something different you wouldn't come yeah. on here to do a graduation speech fucking think of a better plan than than using my our platform here to launch shit at the end that's, that's, <laughs> that's a line right there our uh, story all right so uh, according to healthline i said that with the with the with the what what what's the website there? El no, Chingon? No, no, todavía no no ha salido. Here it is right here, look. Ooh. That's the one. Casquese. Casquese! Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's pa, pa, the one. Pa. Oh, okay. That one's gonna change the world. It's it's the first Mexican chocolate that takes its own stains out of underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me how I did it. <laughs> you can eat this chocolate, shit in your, you can shit in your calzone todo surrao on your way to Barstow, change your underwear. Don't throw them away anymore. Just run them through some water and instantly, like, like, uh, like, uh, hi, I'm Joey Fix. <laughs> Let me and, buy uh, it. See I'm going to buy it. Put me down for a case oh, right now. A case. Uh, uh, the guy, hi, it's <laughs> Phil Swift here. <laughs> and this could, this could take chorro out of your underwear with just a little water. Okay, what is it? 
Uh, okay, so, uh, masturbation. Basically, despite uh, this is according to Healthline.com, despite the myths, there are actually no physical harmful side effects of masturbation. However, excessive masturbation can harm your relationships and ad- everyday life. There you go. Other than that, masturbation is a fun, normal, and healthy activity. You know, it, it can affect your. I had a joke where the, they, they would, the doctor said, you know, your psychologist says you and your wife have to make a uh, a date night. You know, have it be Wednesday night, and then the wife says, okay, don't forget. Tomorrow night, man, it's Wednesday already. Yes, and don't jack up. Ah, don't tell me what. Don't tell me what not to do. <laughs> don't tell me what not to do. Yeah, I think it's. I just think it's. Uh, I think it's a gateway thing. It leads to. It leads to you tying up your, your huevos, you know, and doing stuff to yourself, putting them. Carry it in your culo, one of those, you know, <laughs> right? And then putting it back in the market. But carry it in your culo <laughs> gives you better vision. Yeah. <laughs> It'll open your eyes up for sure. What else do we have? All right. Let's... And, you know, we've had some pretty good guests, I think, you know. Uh, Anna Navarro was great. Oscar was amazing. Yeah. And then Oscar getting the COVID, so we want everybody to be safe and, and wish Oscar. And we uh, wish him the yeah, best. Yeah, wish him the best. Good health. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was trying to see if I if I can get an answer from him on uh, you know, I, I wanted to make a, on, I, I posted something on Instagram, you know, wishing him well, it was great. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to send him a personal message, hey, I have a big pair of consultants waiting for you to come out. But right now may not be a time when he's ready for a, a funny line, you know. He, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. On. He's better, he's better. Uh, he's still a little bit weak, but he's feeling better. Good. That's yeah. great. That's um, great. We love to hear that. What is that, rubbed uh Aronika Hummel. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> says my humor is back, but I'm, but I'm still a little bit better. Okay, good. Uh, good, good. Yeah. Shit, maybe I got a shot at him then. Uh, hey. Uh, yeah. Good, man. So we heard from Oscar. He's, he's good. Good. Awesome. A little follow-up. Uh, you guys want another? Yeah. All right. Throwing back to the George Lopez show days here. Hey, George, huge fan. I know you hear that a lot, but I had a question. Um, what was your favorite scene to shoot for the George Lopez show? Huge fan of that show. Used to watch it with my mom. Thank you. Um, wow. Well, first of all, I mean, all of it was kind of a, all of it was kind of a, uh, a bit of a, nobody ever thought, even myself, you know, never thought that it would, you know, I told you about that thing in the paper. Um... Not thinking we'd get past four, then nine, then, you know, a full season. But I think all in all, you know, I knew that it took 88 episodes to get into syndication. So uh, I remember the president of Warner Brothers told me at about like 13, because I had an issue, I went to him directly, a man to man. And he said that I could either be a crazy actor and think everybody was out to get me or I could go back and go to work. And I said, I'll, I'll go back and go to work. But that guy legitimately turned out to be detrimental to the show. He's not the president of Warner Brothers TV anymore. But didn't sound like he had the best bedside manner based he, on that he, conversation. He was, uh, you know, we sold the reboot to Netflix and he he squashed it uh, maybe five years ago. So when people ask me, oh, you know, well, you should reboot your show, we were way ahead of it. And this guy uh, uh, legitimately no made way. a point to to uh, purposely uh, not have the reboot. Uh, ever happen? Was that was there any sort of rationale, or he's just, just someone think, who had approvals and he said no? No, I think yeah, I just think he he never really was a fan of the show. I think you know we he, he got to a point where it was it was doing well, and I mean he pretended to be a fan. I mean that's kind of what the thing is. He pretended to be a fan of the show, but then in reality he said, you know, if you guys go and sell this, you know, have him come back and let's talk, and we did. And it was like it's not going to happen. And so, so the guy who told you like don't don't think everyone is out to get you was in fact a guy who was, was out to get you. That's what <laughs> the guy who said. Don't. Smile at your face all and, the time. They want yeah, to take your place. place. Backstab. That's right. So he was uh, responsible for that. But I think the one the um, let's see that was eighty eight. I wore a Dale Jarrett's uh, NASCAR jersey in the show. It was, oh, cool. So on eighty eight, so I could always tell when eighty eight was. But I think you know the ones that Sandra were in because of. She was such a big influence on the show and like really happened because of her. So to see her on that set with me and her and knowing how it just started from just like, hey, come in, let's sit down and see if, you know, what we got here to from that to all of that. And even now, 
I was on the doctor. It's on this morning. It was on. It's. I watch it. It'll be yeah, on it forever. Was a, it was a great show you. then. It's a great show now. Yeah. And I still watch it. That's still a good sign of the. Yeah, it'll be on forever. When I'm gone, That's it'll great. still be. It'll still be around. <laughs> thank God. Um, I kind of want to ask the flip side of that, which was, were there any episodes or scenes that ended up being like unexpectedly brutal or something crazy happened on the day or last minute or anything like that? Um, let's see. I think we did. We early on we did a show where the guy was uh, right around nine eleven. I think after in the beginning of the show that the guy was. It turned out to be a guy that was on that show, Claus, and he was in a few Sandra Bullock movies. Uh, um, like the recent Jason show, Altoon, uh yeah, on, on uh, Jason, I think. and uh, he was a Arab employee that had taken uh, flight lessons, and we worked in an airplane parts factory. And my mom was profiling him as a uh, terrorist, and then she brought him. We, we took him to dinner, and he came to dinner. And she's trying to grill him, and then she says. Uh, Oh, I love to. Uh, he goes. I love to fly and see the pyramids. And he goes. Oh, he goes. No, I'm Vegas. You know, right by the Paris Hotel and the and the MGM. There's a period. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the mom looked at me and she goes, "Am I the only ones whose eyebrows are raised?" And I said, "Yeah, because you drew them on like that." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know those those things. You know, and then there, I remember the. I remember the. The guy at Warner Brothers, the guy who was in the note says, Warner Brothers does not want to do this show because it was about something that, it was a comedy about something that had really happened. And that episode, right? Mm -hmm. Or your, they were talking about your show in general. And you know, I, fire, I, I think I fired him in the end of the show, but going back, I wish I hadn't fired him. Like, I, I, we won a couple of awards for the show, but I wish I would have believed him, but I think they made me. In the writing of it, they made me let him go. Where well, I wish I would have said, "I believe that, I believe that what he's telling me is true," and it, and we're just profiling him like we profile other people. But mm -hmm. that was one that, I mean, the other guy, you know, I'd I'd come up with the idea with my partner, and then he took his name off the script. Oh, really? <laughs> and then it was just me. <laughs> and then you know, Warner Brothers doesn't want to do it. He took his name off the script. All of a sudden, you look at the episode and. It says written by where before it had like five names. Now it's just my name. <laughs> and you're like, hey, you motherfuckers. And that's it says you know, only George Lopez. Only George Lopez. Reason. And then it won some awards from the. As the werewolves that stand up. That, that's right. Yeah. And I said, we're still doing it. And I, I, I like the show. Yeah. I well, like and, and like for people who aren't familiar, taking your name off a script is a big deal. A huge deal like, because yeah. it's in perpetuity. Like, you know, those things, they air. I'm, I'm not even sure. And that affects your money. I'm not sure if even that. That particular episode, I, I could see how that particular episode would not see the light of day uh, these days because of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard you know I've heard of people pulling episodes in the wakes of like school shootings and stuff like yeah. that, similar sort of piece. And we did a school we did school shootings there on the show. We did steroids. Uh, Stacy Keach was uh, my boyfriend's uh, my daughter's boyfriend's uh, father. He was great. Stacy Keach is fucking amazing. Can't believe I got Stacy Keach to be. Him, the guy, man, such a great, great actor, man. To this day, my wife makes fun of me because I used to call him Stacy Keach. <laughs> yeah, Keach. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. Stacey. It's Casey Steach. Stacy Keach. Yeah, Steach. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had it backwards. Yeah, I mean, we had some pretty good actors on there, man. And you know, the the thing about my show was if I I, I was going to all these Laker games, and if I saw somebody at a Laker game, I would say to do my show. Uh Nice. Um, my, the guy from the Green Mile, who's my buddy. What's it? Uh, the big guy? Yeah, man. He passed. Bro. He passed. Oh, what is his name? Uh, Michael Clark Duncan. Yes. You know, I saw Phenomenal Michael Clark talent. Duncan, and I asked him to be on the show, and then I asked everybody if they golf, and he said he didn't golf, and then I think he was dating Amorosa back then, and he started to golf, and he really liked it, man. Like he, he, I remember he came to the tournament with her, and they played with the Riviera, and um, we'd see him at the games. And me and mine, dad take mine, and uh, he was a really, really sweet dude, man. And he had a heart attack and passed really yeah. young, you know. Yeah. And and uh, he did an episode where he was like a ghetto dentist, <laughs> and you went to go see him. He had a do rag on because I was trying to get a better dental plan for. Uh, uh, my, my my kid needed braces and I went in there and the two brothers were like what's wrong with our dentist and you go in there 
and he and I get into it about whose childhood was worse. You know, he goes, my mother, my mom used to put me in the closet so you could go party and do it like that. I said, oh, yeah, well, my neighbor touched me inappropriately my no-nos. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, the wife goes, no, that's a, that's a lie. I'm in it to win it. Like, I'll lie. <laughs> uh, but him and Dog the Bounty Hunter oh, yeah. was on where he was the neighbor. He grabbed my jacket and tore my jacket. <laughs> I, tried to, I was trying to walk off. No way. And I said, as I walk off, you know, grab me. It had this jacket on. He fuck, come back. He fucking tore it. <laughs> oh my god! Fucking tore the collar, tore the sleeve, <laughs> and he didn't do anything but just grab me, man. That was the same one Vera Gosa was in. Uh, he made a comeback, uh, dog. The yeah, because he was off the air for a long time. He said he got yeah. the N-word pass. There is no yeah. N-word pass. He goes, "Hey, use the N-word." He goes, "Yeah, I got a pass. You know, from who?" <laughs> yeah, you'll have to show me the documentation. Uh, yeah, they're gone. That you don't, can't get a pass for that. Um, but uh, anybody that I saw, who else? Uh, Barbara Eden. Wow. I dream of Genie Batman. I dream of Genie. Batman was on. He was a lawyer. Oh, he was great. I dream of Genie was bad. She's a- and she good. Her too, my thumb. <laughs> Wait, like uh, Adam West, Batman? Yeah. Oh, uh. <laughs> and then everybody had him signing Batman stuff, and he comes into my room. He goes, George, listen, old chump. I feel like I'm a bit in a convention. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to not. I'm coming back next week, and I want to come back, but I don't want any. I don't want to be able to. Have a look at this, like, I'm signing things all day. So I said, all right, we got it. Yeah. So I had to tell, I had to tell everybody, stop getting into the sign shit. I said, hey, you're fucking Batman, eh? But he was a, he was quite older, too, man. I yeah. think he was in his 90s. Oh, wow. But he, wow. he, he was, um, and he did my talk show. He did a thing where the Batmobile, oh, man. Wow. Man. I it's, bet his whole life has felt like a convention. I, I think <laughs> Since so. Since he was Batman. <laughs> and even though they made Batmans, I mean, still, he was the one that, Sure. Could, he couldn't fly. He was the only one that was real. He was the only one that was real. <laughs> so true. And, then, and that hole where they used the bat caves over there by, if I went hiking, I'd go look for it up by my house. Is that right? Remember that? They no. would come down, <laughs> yeah. and I would be like, where is that thing? And if you look in, in uh, look it up right there. It's not so far weird. from my house, man. And I still want to go see it, but I don't know for what, bitch, fucking oil, it's a fucking hole in the, probably go in there, about to blow each other in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on in here. The, the little, little bad boys are in here. Bad vato and bad bitch. You know what I mean? They're probably in there. Fucking tell you to come out all rompido with a closed eye. <laughs> Call me bad ruka. Here it's I am. It's over there in the in Los Feliz. Is that it? Right Is that there? it? Right there? Yeah. Look. So Bronson Bronson Canyon in uh, in Griffith Park. Here, come. You go in there and culiar in there. <laughs> Look at there that. There's even some people looking at an image of that. That's it, right? That's uh, that, 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 is that where the car would come out of right there? Straight in, uh, yeah, in Griffith Park. Uh, known as a filming location for many films and TV series, especially westerns and science fiction. I ain't going in there. I'm oh, good. Are we good? What else? Uh, I got one more, a little fun one to end on. How's that? This is good. All these are good, huh? The recaps, we'll get somebody in there. Who else? Yeah, these are, yeah again, call in. Keep leaving voicemails. We'll get Burt Ward. I thought they <laughs> doing some infomercials. 818 533 How about Catwoman? 818. Is she still alive? How about Cat? How about Cat? Bad girl. I. Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't want to say that. Remember that one? <laughs> he ba- remember the? Remember you didn't know she was on until the motorcycle went by? I was just passing gas in case my wife's watching. <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, we're going to go back uh, to third grade. We'll go back past back row. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, one more. Uh, they had the war off George, the hey, it's me from San Diego. Hey, man, I got to ask, what happens when the aliens find, find the land down on uh, Earth, man? You know? I mean, what... what, what what goes through people's minds when they see the Martians come down in UFOs? What is the first thing that happens in your opinion? The, you know, he goes on for a little bit. He just feed, him, feed him fentanyl. <laughs> yeah, leave him some cookies with fentanyl in them. Yeah, man. Where do you guys stand on aliens? Are you, are you believers, truthers? There's something out there. There's I believe that there's there. something out land. there. I don't care about it. <laughs> I got enough problem with the people down here. Well, like, what about that's what, a great a, what about all the spirits in my house? Like, I mean, uh, yeah, they were—they're not there anymore. But you, you take down that painting yet? The the one the, the, the one looks like the devil on your wall. I know, but you know that that was not uh, like I live alone, man. I mean. That was really something. The orbs and the words. Alone, alone? Yeah. Just me and my little Luberderm. (laughs) (laughs) 
You know, I make it look like I eat clam chowder, uh, <laughs> but I just order. Because, <laughs> you, you know, you'd be like, hey, fucking cochino, what is that goddamn uh, red lobster in here? <laughs> you know, I try to, you know, I, I try to make it look like I at least civilize. Because you have the same lady coming to the house, you know, she knows a lot of different sights and smells. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> she had to deal with some spirits of her own. It's like, you know, I'm driving the car. It's like, oh, my fucking towel is in the bed. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go back. It's like why OJ dropped the fucking glove. Eh? You're like, fuck, I dropped the fucking glove. <laughs> <laughs> fuck me. It's got my fucking DNA all over it. It's all crunchy. <laughs> fucking glove was like this, man. <laughs> It's like at Home Alone. I mean, it's not like you can put, yeah, you can put it back on. This thing was all fucking, <laughs> with my mech uh, going. It looked like a goddamn fucking uh, 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 mud pie with with whipped cream on top. <laughs> a dark brown towel you with could, crema. You could use your. I'll be at Match to, Bud next you weekend. You could use huh. your towel as a scraper for your sartén. Equally, man. <laughs> Have you left that my hand towel ahí during like? Uh, uh, when the mosquitoes are out, like you just take it to where there's bad mosquitoes, like North Carolina, and you you put it out there in the middle of the street. The next day they'd be like, "I'm going to thank you. We trying to get rid of this <laughs> hundred years. <laughs> they're all on that towel. Hey, that that sound bitch. I don't know what you use on there, man, but it's, they're all gone. We want some back. <laughs> it's killing the fa fauna in our in our town. It's my special recipe, <laughs> man. Bad." Oh my god. You have to pretend it's other things, you know, to not look so sucio. Yeah. <laughs> so aliens. <laughs> so so I, I don't know, man. There's there's it won't be good. That's my Is there a slender man? You believe well, you, that, you, you know believe what? that there's slender man? They, they they put out the, <laughs> no. they're they're now putting out UFOs <laughs> exist. You know, they they're saying they do, they've been you UFOs. know what? So and, and they've been watching you. There's been UFOs since the '50s. That old yeah. black and white, where the guy's like, "What the fuck is that?" And they're going, and you can see it. Um, and they and they are releasing more information. Yeah. So, right. so something's out there. I I call them UFOs. So the UFOs are <laughs> out there. But I don't give a shit. You know, alien. This there's like I said. I got enough problems right here. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> on tierra if they ever me. come down and want to take someone up and fuck them and then run tests on them, there's a guy in San Diego that would be the prime candidate. Hey, he's a volunteer. Chronic. <laughs> Beam him up. He'll give you a DNA sample. All right. Thanks, Kim. All right. Chingon como siempre. That's good. Great. That does it for today. Keep leaving voicemails. And, Keep leaving uh, voicemails and... Uh, what are we getting into? Um, yeah, anything, anything to plug? Upcoming dates or anything? No, no. Anything I, like I, I, but but you know, let's let's talk about what uh, let's talk about if you leave messages about what it's been like to be in COVID. Like even if you have unfortunately lost people who who have yeah. Uh, let's talk about the how your how the life how the maybe the, your lives are impacted now. Well, uh, regular I, regular people, not not me. You know, because I still travel. But what's it like on the day? On the ground, you know, yeah. on a daily basis. I don't know. I lost, uh, within a month, I lost two brother-in-laws, you know, from yeah. COVID. I lost my compadre and his brother, who I went, to, you know, I grew up with his brother. We went to school together. Fuck we man. went wow. to Vietnam. You know, we, were, we did everything together. Then this guy got his stuff together. He got his life together. And he became a uh, construction guy, had his own business, got his license, got everything Everything he needed, he's remodeled my house, and him and his brother died within two weeks of each other. And, how, and what happened, man? They just and they it, got it. They got it, you know. And 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 my compadre, Shit. which was his older brother, sat there and said, "You know what? I watched my younger brother suffer when he would. They wanted. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let him put me on this. I'm not going to let it take its course, you know." And he was in the hospital, and he he called me up just a few days before he died, and we had a talk. You know, and he was just saying, I'm just, I'm not going to give up, Copa. You know, I'm here. And yeah, it was all good. And I thought he was going to come out of it. Did he get vaccinated? Uh, no. I don't know if he was vaccinated or not. You know, I, listen, man, I mean, that's a choice, but. Was it before the vaccine? No. Okay. No, the va vaccine was out. And, and, and so, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know if he got vac vaccinated. I know he did not want to suffer like his brother. And he said he was, finally said, I'm not going to do it. 
And that was it. And this guy was one of the toughest guys I knew. I mean, he, he was from the barrio. I'm from I mean, the barrio. I'm here. I'm there. And I remember I stopped some guy in o, in Opico, guy with a gun. He said, look, Opa, you know, you're always telling me, hey, call the cops. Said, look at that guy. And he's walking down the street with a rifle. So I went out there. I said, hey, what's happening, Holmes? Hey, you know who I am? He says, oh, yeah. He says, you know my carnal. I said, yeah, I know your little carnal. That's a good-looking gun you got there. You mind if I see it? And he let me see it. He said, I said, is it loaded? He says, no. I said, you know what I, what I do for a living? He says, no. I said, I'm the Huda, brother. Mm-hmm. And so let's see if it's loaded. And it started, no, yeah, started ejecting. I said, you know what? You're not getting this gun back. And I said, what do you mean? He looks at me and said, what do you mean I'm not getting that gun back? That's my gun. I'm taking that gun. And my compa was right there. He says, hey, look, he's a cop. He's got to go by the law. I don't. I'll kick your fucking ass right now. Wow. Hmm. He yeah, says, sure. I'm, I'm from the barrio, brother. I'll kick your fucking ass right now. I told my wife. I had already told her, call the cops. Call the station. She yelled. Where was he going? He was just walking through the walking hood? Walking. He had picked it. He had picked the gun up from one house and was now walking through the hood from someplace else. And I knew wow. where it was. I knew the house that it, that it came from. Oh wow! So I got the gun. His homeboy came and said, "Let it go, brother. Let it go." I got the gun. I took it down to the the kid, the guy that he took from this house. I took it down to his dad's house, and I said, "Here, here you are. Here's the gun. This is what happened. This is what I got." And he says, "Thank you, mijo." He said, "But next time, fuck him. Don't give him a break. Take the gun. Take him. Break the wow. fucking gun. Take him all to jail." I don't give a shit. This is fucking wrong. Yeah. And so that's that's the way it was. This is my compa. He, he was a tough. When 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 my when my wife's brother were all camping together at Lake Nascimento, he had my at that time he had a little travieso son, and son's getting in trouble. My brother-in-law's yelling at him, and my compa is right there saying, "Fuck him up, compa. Fuck him up. Don't let him get away with that shit." Wow. And, and so that's, that, do my thing. That, that's, <laughs> that's the kind of guy he was. Had the heart of gold. When they shot Tom Pullman, a deputy from East LA Station, got killed while on patrol. My copa called my house right away because it just said deputy shot, yeah. died, mm-hmm. no name. Called my house, I answered the phone. He cried on the phone. He Man. said, I was just checking if it was Sad you, up. it's not you. He says, and let me tell you right now, I don't give a shit what happens. I'd rather visit you in jail than I would visit you at the cemetery. That's how much I love you, Koba. You do what you got to do to stay alive. That's amazing. And and so, and he died of COVID. Shit. Right after his brother says, I ain't going to do it. His brother was a Marine, my buddy that I grew up with. He was a hardcore Marine, Vietnam veteran, everything. So I, I know a lot of people. I, I won't say a lot. I know several people, including family members, that have passed from it. It was their time. Man. It's awful. It was their time. All right. Let's, uh, yeah. If you got stories, if you're talking about, I mean, I was a beautiful man, but it's it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing for to see, have relationships that long and and have to see it go. Uh, oh, it is. Go like that. It is. The guy that broke me in homicide, the guy that taught me everything I know that made me the good homicide investigator that I was. I was the best man at two out of three of his weddings, two out of three of his marriages. Nah. I did more shit with this guy. We got more. Tr- it, it was just a great guy and had a heart of gold. The last marriage lasted 25 years until he died. It was a great one. She's a great lady. But Don Garcia passed away from COVID. That's probably one of the only adult males when they told me. I cried. Yeah. I cried. And, and she just recently gave me a pillow. And the pillow is a Hawaiian shirt that Don Garcia wore. Oh. Oh. And there's a... T- wow. Oh, uh, tear me up. There, there's a message on there that said he wore this. And we both cried together when she gave it to me because uh, she wanted me to have this. Man, that's, and, and that's so really something, that's though. I, I think it's a, it's a great gift. Oh, of, oh of, my God, of to yeah. give uh, to give somebody something like so that. thoughtful it made 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 me cry. Love the lady. God bless her. God if Momo goes, we'll make comforters. <laughs> <laughs>
That's the note we needed. <laughs> All right, thanks, everyone. That's what hit the show.